Teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. I wish I had a million dollars. Ah, sh Today I'm talking about It's a Wonderful Life, the 1947 Frank Capra film that stars J Jimmy Stewart. Uh, as the owner, operator, not technically owner, I'm not really sure what the ownership structure is of the savings and loan. They seem to actually be something like a co-op because all of the people invested, uh, all of the loan holders have shares in the savings and loan. It's a great movie. I, I re-watched it just before shooting this, actually. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. I, I, I hadn't thought that much about it. Boy, what a powerful film. I was really drawn in. Putting it into my Christmas movie rotation, right up there with Miracle on 34th Street. This is a classic movie, right? What you know about this movie is that it is the worst day of his life. It is Christmas Eve. He's gonna, he's gonna kill himself. He's gonna throw himself off of a bridge when all these people praying for him wake up God and God sends an angel who they, I think it's, it's sad because actually it's a little, the, the nebulas in the beginning when they're talking about Clarence who they're gonna send, they, they don't have a very high opinion of It's a clockmaker's turn again. Oh, Clarence hasn't got his wings yet, has he? We passed him up right along because you know, sir, he's got the IQ of a rabbit. Whoa, 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 where'd that come from? So they send Clarence down who is a uh, angel, second, second class, working on getting his wings. So if he can save George Bailey from himself. He will earn his wings. I said I wish I'd never been born. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's an idea. So Clarence and George Bailey walk away from the bridge into a new reality, which George Bailey never existed. And they go to what used to be George's favorite bar, Martinis. It's now Nick's to order a drink. Clarence is a little out of sorts being a few hundred years old, doesn't really know what people are drinking these days, so initially he orders a flaming rum punch. Hey look mister, we save hard drinks in here for men who want to get drunk fast, and we don't need any characters around to give the joint atmosphere, is that clear? But what if Clarence had gotten that flaming rum punch, what would that have been? Uh, we're going to make a flaming rum punch right now. But first, a word from this episode's sponsor, Flaviar. If you're here and don't know about Flaviar, well, you really should, because Flaviar was made exactly for people just like you. Flavor explorers questing after the perfect bottle. And what's the perfect bottle? Well, that's different for everyone. And that's why with a Flaviar subscription, you get a tasting box and a premium bottle every quarter. You're not limited to one. You can always purchase more delivered directly to your doorstep. And the experts at Flaviar are always coming up with new tasting boxes built around brilliant themes every month. Aged gins, tropical rums, Hemingway's favorites. Yes, thank you. But Flaviar is more than a box of magic in the mail. It's a community, a club for you to meet with your fellow flavor explorers and compare notes. You'll get invited to exclusive events to meet and mingle with your fellow flavor explorers and the folks behind the brands. You're ready to try new things more often and become a bona fide spirits aficionado and Flaviar's where you start drinking better. Click the link in the description below to join the Flaviar membership club and also subscribe to their YouTube channel. That's right there too. And back to the episode. Now you'll find a few different recipes online for this as well, uh, specifically Clarence's Flaming Rum Punch. I did think about just presenting somebody else's recipe, but I, I felt like it's kind of unnecessary. Flaming Rum Punch, actually, if you're adhering to some pretty strict definitions of punch, should imply everything you need to know about it. So I've got some rum. I've got, this is oleosaccharum that I allowed to macerate for a day, and then I added back into it the juice of the lemons. That's how David Wondrich does it. It's good enough for me. Okay, so I've got one separate container. It could be anything. I'm going to use this silver mug. It's fine. And I've got this one toddy mug. And what we're going to do is we're going to build half the drink here and then prepare to serve the drink here and then combine them. That's how this is going to work. I add two ounces of Smith & Cross Jamaican rum to the bottom of our toddy glass. A toddy glass, toddy mug. Apparently these were, it's funny, these became the de facto mug for hot beverages. They were designed for beer, apparently. It's a beer glass. I just read that recently in an article that David Wonders wrote about how a pint of beer is too much damn beer for a uh, Boilermaker. You prefer smaller beers. And just a scant quarter ounce of this Ray and Nefru overproof. Now, in our secondary mixing glass, at a regular mixing glass would be fine. Just, just felt appropriate for the 
setting, time, place, and the drink. I'm going to put in here one ounce of my oleosaccharum. This is really an oleosaccharum and lemon juice blend. I'm gonna move pretty quickly here because this is gonna start to lose temperature, but I just wanted to have my uh, oleo and my hot water in one place together. I want to add four ounces of hot water, nearly boiling water, to my secondary container, whatever it happens to be. I'm going to light this on fire. I hit that with a little cinnamon. fresh grated nutmeg. And our oleo and hot water mixture. Next, I will add a garnish comprising of a twist of lemon and a cinnamon stick. And now we have Clarence's Flaming hot rum punch. I love that. <laughs> that is a delightful, I say delightful a lot. I should come up with some other words. This is, um, I mean, if I'm less than charitable, it is an amazingly good rum toddy, but I think it's more than that. My cinnamon stick fell in, that's good, that's fine. That won't hurt it none. There is a Oleosaccharum has it, which is really the key ingredient in traditional punch, has qualities that are, well, the lemon oil is just very different from lemon juice, and that's what comes out of the peels of a lemon. It's hard to draw a comparison there. Of course, there is lemon juice in here as well, but it just adds an entirely different texture and it registers with a different part of your palate, but still in a very lemony way. The rum is not overshadowed here, but tempered. So um, that Smith & Cross, that funkier rum, and I think a funkier rum really actually makes a lot of sense here, is gonna stand up to all that hot water and the oleosaccharum, whereas something a little more subtle, um, a little bit more uh, smooth, if you prefer that terminology, would kind of get lost. Um, so even if you're not like a big fan of like, well, what you might call pirate, pirate juice, a funky rum. Here, uh, I think it's the right choice. I get a really pleasant lemony, citrusy sweetness right up front. And just like this experience of wonderful warmth just sliding down and filling you up. And it really does answer to Clarence saying, oh, no, 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 it's not cold enough outside for that flaming rum punch right now. You just feel it moving right through your extremities. It's good stuff. It's like an internal heating mechanism. It's, it's really a wonderful drink. And uh, it's very simple to make, really. All you need for oleosaccharum is a little bit of time, honestly. And the rest of this is, you know, probably stuff that, stuff you might already have in your bar. And that's what I like about it. It's not, there's not a huge amount of prep time here. This is a, a punch, you know, as it might have been done for a weary traveler coming into a tavern in the 1700s, 1800s. Um, and uh, appropriate to that, to Clarence, to who he is. So this is my Clarence's Rum Punch. I hope you're having a great holiday. Uh, what are your favorite Christmas movies? I would really have to know what your favorite Christmas movies are actually, or favorite holiday films as well. There's not that many non-Christmas holiday movies. Um, Eight Crazy Nights is the only one that comes to mind, and that one features a scorpion bowl. Apparently a lot of people, when I did my scorpion bowl episode, thought that drink had been invented for that movie. Okay. My wristwatches are provided by Crown and Caliber. If you're interested in watches, why don't you check them out? There's a link in the pinned comment below. My barware and bar tools are provided by Barfly Mixology Gear. If you're interested in using the tools I use on the show, you'll find a link in the pinned comment below where you can order that stuff. If you like the show, I really hope that you would, uh, you'll subscribe because, you know, what they say is that every time a ding-dong joins, an angel gets its wings. 
Ooh, this one doesn't ring so good, huh? If you like the show, I really hope you will subscribe. And if you're gonna subscribe, why don't you give an angel its wings and join the Ding Dong Gang by ring a ding a ding a dang dong the bell. That was really sticky. So I hope you guys are having a great holiday season that you're staying warm out there. I have done some other holiday drinks. I would appreciate it if you want to take a look at them. Did some eggnog. I've done some Thanksgiving cobblers. Stay warm out there. Enjoy a flaming rum punch. It'll heat you up. I'm feeling better already. I have done other holiday drinks. Here are some links. And I will see you guys. I always want to say I'll see you on the flip side. But that is like the lamest shit I could. Like I don't know where that comes from. I will see you next time on How to Drink.